Welcome to this Stateless Codecast. This is episode number 13 in our series, Getting Started with Rails 7. So in our previous episode, we went and created the comment model here. We're in section eight, scroll up to it, adding a second model. So in the first 11 or so episodes, we went through creating the article model for this uh, getting started blog application that we've been doing and going through with the uh, the Rails 7 getting started guide. Uh, our 12th, uh, no, this is the the, third, the 11th episode, we did a little bit of a detour and did the equivalent of creating that article using the Rails scaffold generators. We created a kind of a, an equivalent model called post, but did so, did what we did in 10 videos took one video to to get the same equivalent the equivalent functionality using the scaffold generator and then in our previous video we added a comment model that has an association with the article model that we already have so it belongs to an article we created uh, we had the generated migration that creates the comments and has a reference as a foreign key to the articles table in that comments table we created and then added in the article has many comments and in order to make our tests for our controller and system tests not fail we added in uh, dependent destroy as an argument there which is found later on in the guide but was needed in order to make our um, our tests not fail we've been using a test driven development method for uh, for going through this guide. The guide itself doesn't use that, but we've been going through each time we're adding new functionality, we'll make the changes to the appropriate tests so that the, um, the tests fail and then only pass when we, um, we add in the code for them. So um, the next thing we're going to do is generate a controller for the comments resource. So we'll go in and do that in our terminal. Oops. I... So generate the comments controller. We'll see that we've got the apps use comments folder. We've got a comments controller test. And then we've got a, uh, a comments helper in our, our app helpers section there. So the and the the guide talks about the the things that got added there. I don't know if by default. Yeah. So the the one thing that shows here that didn't get generated is the uh, the style sheet for the controller. So that um, by default didn't get added when we just did uh, Rails generate controller. If we go to assets, style sheets, we can see we've only got a an application.css file right now. We do not have, uh, even when we did the um, generate scaffold, it did not by default create a, um, a style sheet in Rails 7 um, using the default um, method of creation, which uses um, hot wire, which is turbo and stimulus, uh, and does not use Rails unobtrusive JavaScript, which had been the, the default for, I think, four, five, and six, at least, of, of Rails uh, longstanding default that is no longer the default. Here, you can create a, uh, a Rails application without even having node installed on your system as a dependency. Um, so, but I digress. We'll take a look now at the, the comments controller that we generated. So right now it's just an empty controller with no actions in it. The controller test just has the, the commented assert the truth. Um, boilerplate in it and then the views comments here is just the folder with no 
views in there because we just did generate controller. We didn't specify which controller actions we had. So if we look at articles controller, we have all seven RESTful routes here. Index, show, new, create, edit, update, destroy. Um, so we'll have fewer than those four comments because it's a nested resource. So the next thing that we do in the guide here is modify the show.html.erb uh, view in the articles resource. So each article will have, we'll take a look. Um, this is as far as we had before. And then starting here, we have add a comment, uh, form with model. And um, I'll compare this to well, actually, we'll go in and write the failing test for this uh, first, and then we'll, we'll go in and start doing the things to make it pass, and we'll, we'll look at this code a little bit more closely and compare it to the, uh, the form that we had with uh, the article form partial. So I will go into our articles controller test. And the show action, we're adding some new functionality here. So we should have an assert select h2. been using double quotes here. I'll just pause and um, normalize that quickly. There we go. Using more consistent styling of our code here. So we've got add a comment and then we should have a form and we should have form three paragraphs here. And that should get us where we need. We will now run this test and it should fail. And it does. So we were expecting an H2, we found zero. We'll go into our show.html.erb now, and underneath that div that we had with the links to edit, back, and destroy, that's for posts. Sure, we didn't change anything there. Our articles controller test is the only thing we've modified, so we'll make sure that we've got the correct show.html.erb. So we've got this. Now we would want after that UL, we will paste in this view code. So we've got the header at a comment, form with model, and you can see uh, this is nested. So article, article dot comments dot build, and then the Ruby block do form, and then for each of the attributes form dot label, and then form dot text field form label form text area and then form dot submit. We'll compare this to the form we had for article. So here form with model model article, it only had the um, the single article um, article section there, not the uh, the the array of the the parent and then the child. And this is necessary because of the way that we have our uh, our resources routed there. So because the, if we go into 
routes.rb, you can see that comment is nested, articles, do, resources, comments, end. Um, so that becomes necessary in order to get the form to work properly. So we'll save that, see where this gets us for our tests. We're back to passing. But if we try to actually submit this form right now, so if I go to my articles, let's say the third article, and I try to create comment here. We can see that it didn't do anything. So we'll go and take a look at the, so started post articles for comments, um, action not found, the action create cannot be found on the comments controller and then it stayed on the comments page with nothing happening there. So we'll take a look at the next step of the guide, which is likely uh, adding the create action to that comments controller, and it is. So the, um, and it notes that the, um, it's going to be looking, you can see it automatically routed to the, um, the comments controller because of how we had the route set up there. So if we go in and add this in now, we're first going to go and write a failing test for our comments controller test here. So in our test, we've got this comments controller test. It just has the empty test the truth comment, um, commented out test. We'll I'll pause and add in the, uh, the failing test for this. So this is the test that we've got here. So in the setup section, we're setting our article to our uh, our nerd fixture article here, and then we've got this should create comment. So uh, we've got the commenter and body strings that we're setting here. We could have done this in the uh, setup action, but I don't know whether we're going to wind up reusing um, that text, so it's probably not necessary. And then we're asserting uh, increase in comment dot count. Uh, we're posting to the article comments URL. So if you go and look at the routes and I intentionally um, did this, so article comments path um, with the article ID, I might need to specify article there instead of um, just putting it like that. Uh, and then uh, the params article D ID is our article ID and then our comment uh, resource has the commenter and body um, attributes to it. After that, uh, we assert the comment has been created. We're going to take a look at the uh, the last comment from that article should be the one that we created. Assert that we redirect to the article show path for that article and that the, um, the commenter and the, um, the comment are um, the, the commenter and the body are matching what we expect and then that the, um, that the, the notice of that matches what we should expect as well. So this is going to fail. We'll do our Rails test here. Oh, and I've got a syntax error. fix that. Maybe a comma after this. Try it again. 
So the action create cannot be found on comments controller. We will, as we've been doing through the previous videos, instead of just copying and pasting the, the final version of uh, the item in the, uh, in the guide into our comments controller, we're gonna kind of go and graduate through the different types of errors that we'll see here. So I'm going to go to the comments controller and add the create. method, get a new error. So comment count didn't change by one. We expected four, actual is three. We go in now and try to do, let me hit the back button. See, nothing happens there. So if we go to the, the terminal here, started post, we've got our comment with our comment, commenter, our body, our article ID, uh, but no template found. Uh, we did a no content there because there's nothing going on in the action yet. So we'll go in now and add the code to make this pass or to, to get our next error. So we'll have an article, we'll have a comment for the article. This is going to create a, a um, well, make it fail first with the forbidden attribute error. So we've got forbidden attributes error. In order for this to work, we need to have the comment params defined there. So um, we're similar to what we did in the article. We're requiring comment to be present in those params, and then we're explicitly permitting the commenter and body parameters for that. So we'll make the next step of this and we'll make this comment params. This might get our test from an error into a failure. So I think it's gonna create the, well, actually it was a failure before we um, did. So it'll be back to a failure, but failing after the comment gets created. Uh, expected it to be a redirect, but it's a 204 no content. So the next thing we'll do is add in our redirect here. This will fail because we don't have the notice specified that we're expecting. So we made it down to the uh, the notice and we'll add that in and now I think we should pass and we do let's see what happens when we try this in the UI So comment was successfully created, but we're not displaying any of those comments. Let me make sure that I just didn't neglect. So add a comment. So yeah, it's because we haven't done it yet. So then this next section here, we're adding in this comment section where we, uh, we iterate through the comments and display uh, each one of them. So 
I will add in some failing tests back in our articles controller test for for these. And then let's see here, comment. So comments, and then there should be for each of these. There's nothing to I guess we could count the strong tags. I'm going to make a class. So we'll get to that point. We'll, back, we'll be back to having failing tests here. And we, we are because we don't have that comments H2. So we'll go back and add this section here. So we are, in this case, iterating through each of the comments on the article. And then for that comment, we've got the comment.commenter and comment.body. And we'll make a class here. commenter and comment dash body. See where that gets us. We are back to passing. So that gave us for each comment there. Um, we had a comment and a comment body. We should now if we reload this third article, we can see we've got comments from somebody saying something. And if we go in now and do somebody else and something else, you can see that that's there. Um, you can see that it's, it's not the, the most uh, visually appealing from a styling standpoint that, um, that there's nothing, you just got comment, comment or comment, there's no kind of um, indication or separation of all those different comments, but um, that's what our getting started um, code provides, and it's easy to change. And we can uh, you can always style things later as you see fit. Leave that as an exercise for the viewer. So take a look now at. 
So we can see here comments, fellow dev, I agree. And that gets us to the end of this section. So we'll run our test all here, make sure that we didn't break anything in the full uh, suite of the tests, including the system tests. We did not. So take a look at our status here. So we added the comments controller. We added the comments helper, but doesn't have anything in it. And then the comments controller test has our create comment test in there. Uh, we added that comment form and the show display of comments to the show view of the articles controller. And then we modified our assertions in that articles controller test for the show action to um, make assertions about the new view code that we added in there. So we'll add that. We'll write our commit message. So we've got our commit message. We will make sure that we all of our items are saved. They are pushed to the remote. And then we'll pick up in the next video with the section nine on refactoring. Want to create your own Ruby gem, but don't know where to start? Code along with me on the end-to-end -end journey of the Nerd Dice project. We'll configure and publish the gem, use GitHub Actions to trigger builds and tests, and create magic methods with Ruby metaprogramming that can roll any number of dice, all while using a test-driven approach. Go to statelesscode.com slash nerddicegem to level up. Thanks for watching this Stateless Code video. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and spread the word. Check out our growing library of videos on our social media channels. Follow us at Stateless Code and Taxation is Theft.